Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today uh, we are going to um, look into the third chapter, which is uh, the PLC programming. So here are the contents of this topic. Okay, firstly, we are going to uh, I'm going to introduce you the systematic approach uh, in designing the PLC programming. Okay. Uh, in this uh, topic, there are a few subtopics such as identify the input and output of the PLC program and then uh, we are going to program uh, the PLC by using the program sequence flowchart. And then later on, we are going to go to the basic functions of the PLC programming and then we are going to look what is majority circuit, uh, repetitive output, latching function and lastly is the interlocking. Now we look the systematic approach of control system design using PLC. There are five steps. The first step is to determine the machine sequence of operation. Okay, in this um, in this step, there are few sub steps that we need to uh, to do first before we jump into uh, designing the PLC programming. We will go one by one and see uh, what are the steps. The first sub step is we need to decide whether we are going to design uh, the PLC program to control an equipment or a system. Secondly, uh, we need to know uh, the purpose of the PLC controller is actually to control an external system. In this example, the PLC here is used to control the external system in any factory for example okay so the plc here is used to control the pneumatic here okay and then to control this machine and then to receive input from this button and therefore before we design the plc we need to know that the ultimate purpose of plc programmer is to control the uh, the external system and then the system that can be controlled, it can be either machine equipment or processors, and it is often called the control system. The movement of the control system is constantly monitored by the input devices that give a specific condition and send this signal to the programmer controller. The movement of the control system is constantly monitored by these input devices and these input devices give specific condition and send this signal to the programmable controller. And then in response, the programmable controller will send signals to the external output devices which actually controls the movement of the control system as specified at the external system and finally for the first step is you need to know that before you can design any plc ladder logic diagram you need to simplify the operation by using a flowchart from this flowchart you need to simulate it from the first until towards the end of the process okay and then only after that when you have the sequence of operation in your flowchart only then you can transfer it into ladder logic diagram easily. Okay, in the next step is you need to know what are the inputs and outputs of your PLC programmer. Okay, you have to identify the inputs. You need to know whether the inputs are coming from the switches, push buttons or sensors. And then you need also to identify the outputs of the system, the external system such as what are the actuators that you need to control. For example, here, maybe you need to control a solenoid, a valve, okay, maybe you need to control a motor, or maybe you need to light up some lights, okay, or pumps. So you have to identify the inputs and outputs of the system first. You need to determine it. So these are the example of input devices. It can be mechanical switches, proximity sensors, 
photoelectric sensors, encoders, push button, motor starters, and so on. And these are the examples of output, output devices. It can be valve, it can be pump, lights, solenoid, motor, and so on. So once you have identified all the inputs and outputs, you need to assign these inputs and outputs to the address of the PLC. Okay, because the address uh, of the PLC will determine the actual wiring that you need to connect between your PLC and your external devices. And then uh, this address must be determined before writing the ladder logic diagram because it's going to be the contact for PLC programming and the physical part of the PLC. Okay, as you can see in this diagram, the PLC, they have I.O. ports, okay, which is actually has been assigned to address in this PLC memory. And therefore, before you assigning the input and output in the PLC, you need to know which port that is connected to that, to that external devices. And then you have to use the address before you can start uh, put the inputs and outputs in your ladder logic diagram. Okay, you need to know the memory of the pin. So this is normally uh, the, no the notation of input and output in the ladder logic diagram. For example, okay, they are normally uh, has been labeled by the operand identifier. So in this case, the input is denoted as I and output uh, as Q. And then normally the parameter that can uh, define the memory of this input and output uh, is actually has been uh, denoted in a number okay uh, for example if you are putting the input or uh, you are connected uh, the input with the first address uh, of the of that input so in the PLC it can be I 0, 0.0 okay this is the address of the first part of input okay and then this is the address of the second part of the input I 1.0 Okay, maybe uh, the output, you are connected it with the uh, this port, which is uh, the number of this port is 4.0, 4.7. And therefore, in your PLC, when you assign the output, you need to look the address of 4.0. The third step is the program writing. In this uh, step, after you have a control system sequence flow chart okay after you have determined the flow chart and then you have tested it uh, you have simulated it and then only then you can convert it to the ladder logic program after you have designed your ladder logic the next step is to program this ladder logic into the memory of the PLC okay after completion of the programming you should check for any coding errors by means of diagnosis function and if possible simulate the whole operation to check if there is any error so after you have done your programming you need to program it to the plc okay or maybe you need to simulate it first by using the software simulation okay after you have checked all the processes are correct okay only then you can program it into the real devices okay into real plc to connect with the external system that can control the machine that you need to control before you run the program okay before you press the start button you have to ensure that all the inputs and outputs wiring are correctly connected according to the io assignment in your ladder logic diagram once confirmed uh, you can test the actual operation by switch on the start button and then along the way you can debug the program okay and you can fine tune the control system if necessary you have to run the test thoroughly until it is safe to be operated by anyone all right so this is the summary uh, flow chart of a uh, systematic approach in designing the control system using plc you need to understand desired requirement of the control system and then you need to draw a general flow chart that uh, represent all the sequence operation of the external devices okay after that 
you have to list all the input and outputs that is uh, respected to the I.O. points of the PLC. And then after you have confirmed all the I.O., then you have to translate the flowchart to the PLC. Okay, or to the log uh, ladder logic diagram. Then you simulate the program through a software first. After you have confirmed the program, only then you can connect it to the actual external output. Okay, you have to connect uh, the PLC to the actual external output and then uh, the devices uh, to the PC as well. Okay, after you have checked all the output connections, okay, and then you run, you, you program it to the PC and then you run the program. Okay, before you... Um, uh, after you have checked all the input and then you start the push uh, the start button okay you push the start button and then you do the test run first okay and then if there is uh, the program is not okay you have to edit the software and then you have to run the test again until it is safe to be operated by uh, other people after you have checked all the program and then you found that the program is okay to be run by other people then you can finally store the program in the EEPROM, the permanent, uh, the programmable memory. Okay, and then uh, you can document it for other people reference in the future. So there are five steps that you need to know in designing uh, the PLC. Okay, you just follow the steps and then inshallah, uh, you may have not any problem in designing the PLC later in the next class. So I'll see you again in the next video.